I was sat in the office and I got a phone call. It was my mum and I answered the phone and instantly from the tone of her voice I knew something bad had happened. She goes, I'm by the side of the road, Claire can't feel her legs and the ambulance are coming. And I remember thinking, if your sister's been airlifted by the air ambulance, you know it's bad. We were told that we were going to a patient who had been cycling along a small country lane and she had collided with a tractor, was potentially trapped underneath the tractor. Usually we get a bit of an idea as to what the scene is like from the air. It was only when we landed in the field next door and we were walking towards the scene that we could see that this was going to be pretty significant. The helicopter allows us to get to patients very quickly, but when we need to, it also allows us to get the patient to hospital very quickly. And given her spinal injuries, we were able to get her to hospital in a much more comfortable way. We just got in the car, shot down the M3, and we arrived and we put in this little waiting room. You're just sitting in this room going, is, she gonna, um, is the doctor going to come in and tell me she's alive or she's dead? Because I knew this was going to make me cry. <laughs> We thought she was going to die. You right? Hi. Hello. I remember from the day saying, you know, bye to my parents because, you know, I'll be back in about an hour. And then I just remember kind of going off as I normally would. Um, and that's it, really. Just kind of a normal day. From the ride, I remember kind of when you go on the side of the road, that bumpy feeling. And then I don't remember anything. We arrived very soon after the first ambulance had arrived, so not much had been done. I think it was probably about 10 minutes uh, from the time that we were dispatched to arriving. Claire was still underneath the trailer at that time. So we, um, we split roles, myself and Nick. So Nick assessed Claire while I started getting access, IV access, so that we could give her the drugs that we needed to. It became obvious uh, that Claire was still conscious pretty quickly. She was uh, obviously in pain uh, and having problems breathing. Our main intervention, uh, I think, was to do a rapid assessment. Gave her some strong pain relief. Um, initially, uh, her blood pressure was okay, but then started to deteriorate, so uh, we ended up transfusing her some blood. And then our aircraft allowed us to move her to the major trauma centre in Southampton. By us attending Claire, we were able to get her to hospital um, much more quickly, get her, to the, get her to the right hospital, and also give her um, active treatment en route that she wouldn't have otherwise had. So I remember being in intensive care and coming around every so often, and every time I woke up, there'd be a family member with me and they'd say to me, you've been in, a, in an accident, you're okay, we're in Southampton Hospital, you're going to be okay. I was aware that my, like I was paralysed. I was aware that my legs weren't going to work again. But I was also aware that had the air ambulance not come out, I wouldn't have survived. The women in my family are very sporty. Claire, she found running. And then someone suggested triathlon to her. And she had a real talent for it. And that became her life for, for well, right up until she had her accident. I don't know if you remember this, because you obviously had every drug under the sun pumping through your veins at the time to help you with the pain. They put this board up, and you held probably mum's hand, and then when we pointed to the correct letter, you squeezed, and we knew what you were trying to spell out. And I think the first thing that you spelt was sorry, so we all immediately started crying. And then the second word that you spelt out was Paralympics, which then made us cry even more, because we just thought, how can you possibly be thinking positively in ahead so quickly and so soon? I wanted everyone to know that I still wanted to be able to do sport. And I think I wanted everyone to know that it was okay, that I was gonna be okay, and that life was gonna go back to what it was. So in that moment, I think it was trying to let everyone know, you know, it's, it's okay. I saw Claire while she was still on the ward uh, after her accident. And even at that time, her positivity uh, and her strength shone through. And really it was quite inspirational then. Um, so what uh, she's achieved since then is, you know, uh, uh, amazing, really. My life now is great. Uh, I'm really lucky. I'm fully independent. So uh, I work um, and I've got my own flat. And going forward, I want to continue with my sport and I'd really like to go to a Paralympics. I'd always wanted to run the London Marathon. 
had it on my bucket list, I wanted to do it, and I finally got my place in 2019. Claire obviously had her injury, and I thought, right, well, I've got my place, but there's no way I can now run this without raising money for, uh, for, for the Hampshire Air Ambulance. I think in the end, um, people donated over £3,000 to the fundraising page, and I got told afterwards that it's roughly £3,000 per flight. So I raised enough money to maybe save one life, um, which is actually quite emotional when you think about it, because someone did that previously and saved my sister's life. So I kind of feel like I'm paying it forward. And I think, I think that's really important. The crew on the day, Tom and Nick, the, the one thing that I would say to them would just be to say thank you. They saved my sister's life. It's, it's that simple. I'd love, to, I'd love to buy them a beer and give them a big hug and try not to cry when I meet them. <laughs> they saved my life, but in doing that, they not only obviously changed my life, but my family's life and all the people around me. My life is very much how it was before. Just sat down. <laughs>